Hi everyone and welcome to this introduction to KDB Plus video. In this video we'll get hands on with KDB Plus and walk through some basic concepts. To follow along you can access KDB Plus from our free KX Academy sandbox by going to kx.com forward slash academy which brings up this page. You can click on the introductory workshop and you can sign up if you haven't already or if you are already signed up you can simply sign in here. Once logged in, you can click the Launch KX Sandbox blue button up here and you'll be prompted to enter your email address and then you'll get a confirmation code that you should enter. In a few seconds, that will load a fully hosted sandbox complete with Jupyter Notebook tutorials, which we're going to look at in this video. You'll also have access to our other products like KX Dashboards, Developer, so you can access them from our launcher pad here, as well as PyKX and we'll be touching on that um, in future videos. For this video, we're gonna focus on the notebook that opened upon launching. Let me just make this a little bit smaller here. So this notebook is an introduction to interacting with KDB Plus using our native SQL language. And it's really aimed at complete beginners, focusing on practical usage that is commonly seen when using KDB Plus. Now we'll just be touching on a very few concepts in this video and I'm going to skim through the notebook, skipping some sections just to make things just for brevity. But for a full breakdown of all the exercises, you can view the videos back in the academy on the page where we just came from. So let's start at the beginning. So in this scenario, you've been given access to an environment with some preloaded data. So first you might ask, what tables actually exist in this processor database? And we can find that out by calling the tables function here. Okay, so we can see we have three tables here, small trips, trips, and weather. And the data set provided is taxi trips of New York City. So then if we want to inspect a specific table, we do have the option to call it directly by name like this. So calling small trips. But this really isn't recommended unless you know it's a small in-memory table. A better approach when starting out is to first run count to find out the number of rows of your table, as well as meta to say the table schema, which tells us all the available columns that are in the table. This gives us a lot more information to work with, meaning we can then use our QSQL select statements to query the table. Before jumping to that, I do just want to show over on our code.kx.com page, this is a nice time to jump to our reference card. So if you want to find out what the data types mean that we just seen in our meta command, we can reference this column here, C, and see what type they are and what their equivalent is in other languages. Not only do we have this information on this page, we also have a full breakdown of all the KDB Plus keywords and functions and operators. So if you're in a situation where you're not sure what a certain function or symbol does, here's where you go to find out. Great. Okay. Let's go back to our notebook. So now we know our table size and the columns. We're going to select some specific columns. So we're going to pick vendor pickup time and fare from the small trips table. So this looks a lot like SQL for those of you that are familiar with it. And you can do very similar things as you can in, in SQL. So we're just filtering some columns here. And you can also do things like filtering rows using a where clause. Next in the notebook, we take a quick look at the structure of a KDB database. So quite a typical structure is what we call date partitioned, which means we start off um, at the database level and then the, the next subdirectory is going to be date. And then after that, we have table and then it breaks down into columns. This means that we should always use date as our first filter in the where clause for the best performance from our database. And we have two examples here, one where we're running date as the first one and one where we're using tip. So tip in this scenario would be a column at the end here, whereas date is obviously above that, above the level of the table. So if we want to run this and we're using backslash TS here, which just is giving us the time and this memory used, we'll see the very first one, which has date first, takes only 32 milliseconds. And the second one, which has the reverse, is still running. <laughs> and is taking almost 13 seconds. So there's a huge performance impact there. So um, even though we're just doing a quick introduction to KDB here, understanding your database structure um, and what columns you should be filtering in what order is super important from the get-go to make sure you're getting the best performance from your 
uh, queries. Moving down, we can do things, and I'm going to skip past these exercises, but do um, go through them. And if you want help, you can check out the videos on the Academy. Um, but for assignment, um, basically, if we wanted to create a new variable, so storing some um, view of the table, so this is, I'm filtering on uh, within a date range here into a new variable called Jan09, I can do that. And then going down here, we can do things like uh, aggregation. So there's many aggregations in KDB. Again, see the documentation page for the full list, but we've got things like average, median, maximum, minimum, and count, and you're able to run them on columns as well. Um, next, we can do grouping. So this always comes before the from and after the select. So we'll do select, list your columns by, and the columns you want to group by, and then we have from whatever table. And then if you have a where clause that goes on the end. So in the first example here, we're actually able to run um, the by command here without actually doing any aggregation. So if I run this one, we'll see I've selected fair and it's coming out as a list of values. And if I wanted to get somewhere inside into that, I might run an aggregation like sum or average or count. So rather than getting all the values, I'm obviously getting the, the sum here. So that's um, a useful feature. We have filter by, which is a more advanced version of by. Do have a look at that. Um, we can do things like updating our existing data. So we can add new columns um, and we can rename columns. We also can delete columns and rows using the delete. So again, similar terminology that you might see in SQL. So the last section in this notebook is on temporal arithmetic, just meaning arithmetic or calculations to do with time. And because KDB Plus was historically used for time series analytics, we have lots of different temporal data types and special ways of interacting between them to make this easier for the user. So we can inherently add different temporal data types together. We can do things like referencing um, the minutes from a timestamp data type using dot notation here. Um, we can also do things like bucketing by time. So we're using X bar here to bucket by the minutes value. And if we have 60 out in front here, that means we're bucketing by every 60 minutes. And we can change that to be five minutes, 20 minutes, whatever we want. So just to make life easier when you're working with specifically time series data, we have a lot of features um, in KDB for that. Okay, I'm gonna just hop to the second notebook on joins quickly. So if you check back on the documentation site, you'll see a full list of all the joins in KDB+. In this notebook, we're just touching on two. So um, I'll briefly show our left join to start with, which is a pretty common join in, in most programming languages. So we're gonna select a subset of our trips data again, and we wanna join it with a weather table that we also have loaded. You might remember when we ran the tables command at the beginning of the video, we seen we had a third table there called weather. So we're doing a count of rows by date, first of all. So we've got our date on the left and our trips on the right. This is a key table in KDB. We can tell that by this vertical line. And that's one of the features of uh, left join. We will need our left-hand side table. So the green one here must be keyed on the column we want to join it on. So our left-hand table, we key on date and our right-hand table needs to contain the column date. Um, but it doesn't need to be keyed on the right. So just showing a few different ways to key here, you can try that out yourself. And the actual join is in this piece. So we've got the left-hand table as above, we're doing our left join, and then we're showing, we can, we're keying this example here. Um, and we see anytime there is a match with the right and the left, we get those values filled in. With a left join, if there is no match on date, then the row will just be blank. It also shows here, okay, but well, if you don't key the right-hand side table, what happens? So we'll just take a quick look at that. So you can see it's the same result, except your resulting table is an unkey table. So maybe depending on what you want, um, you might decide to use one over the other. The other join showed here is an as of join, which is a specific time series join, which is very powerful and allows us to very quickly group historical time series data, basically selecting the latest result as of a specific time in your data set. So definitely take some time to check that out. Then finally, I'll just touch on what's covered in the last few notebooks here. We have a notebook on data structures. So I know I focused on tables for most of this video, but we do have other data structures. We have lists, 
And we've seen that list was called back in our first example when we ran our buy without an aggregation. So I can just pop back up to here. This is a list in KDB. Um, all of our columns are actually lists in KDB. Um, and that's not maybe inherently obvious, but um, that's how it works under the hood. Um, so if you want to learn things from first principles, um, you can check out our fundamentals course and build up from that. Um, I guess we started with tables today because it's the most practical one, find most common, especially for new users. It's the most easy to comprehend, but we have lists. We also have dictionaries. Um, and then there's some more information in here on tables as well. Then we have functions here. So how would we define a function? Um, all of the aggregations we see, for example, min, max, count, they're all functions in KDB, but you might want to create your own. So for example, here, we're defining a function called speed. We're gonna divide um, miles by hours. We're gonna multiply that by 1.609 to change from miles to kilometers per hour. And then we're gonna return that here. So this, the curly bracket is the notation to use if you wanna define a function. Um, and you can check out this notebook if you wanna see how to do more complex functions as well. And then finally, in the last notebook, we show loading data and inter-process communication. So looking at things like if you have a CSV file you want to load into a KDB table or a JSON file, and how would you talk between different queue processes? Cool. So that's it for this video. Um, I'll see you in the next one.